Peter and Elizabeth both have successful careers. Peter is the CEO of his own company, and Elizabeth works for a foreign investment bank. They enjoy a good income and a healthy lifestyle. I've got good health. Um, like Elizabeth, I I need to have more of a regular exercise uh, program. But Elizabeth has been making her smoothie <laughs> special every morning. Uh, <laughs> And in that, she puts all kinds of stuff. Mm. I, I kind of wonder what all she's feeding me. <laughs> but but it, it's indicative of greater awareness of what we're feeding our bodies. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, things like that go a long way to providing better health. Higher income can make healthy recreation more accessible, such as their club memberships. And behind me is Deep Cove and the Yacht Club, Deep Cove Yacht Club. There is a recreational activity for canoeing and kayaking. And the kayaking is very good. You can go up what is called Indian Arm, which goes up this way for about 20 kilometers. And at the end of that 20 kilometers is a facility of the Yacht Club, which we call the Outstation. And in the wilderness, it's just a beautiful location. And limited income means limited choices. When you're in the situation that I'm in right now, Put your hand in your pocket, you got seven bucks. Okay, what's this for? Well, I'd like to go to a movie. Too bad, it's 11 bucks. So you put the seven bucks back in your pocket, back to the shelter, watch TV, read a book, carry on. Dr. Patty Daly believes that these problems can be tackled in a more cost-effective manner with intervention at an earlier age. One of the most important determinants of health is early childhood development. Early childhood development is like an immunization program against mental health and addictions and many of the other important health conditions that we can see later in life. Access to key services at childhood can produce dramatic benefits later in life. Things like access to quality daycare, things like access to libraries and community centers that have programs for children, things like ensuring that there's access to healthy nutritious food for children so that they don't go hungry. Some of these initiatives we know can start to address those vulnerabilities we see in that early childhood period. But the lack of these services often foreshadows future problems. I had to work a 12-hour night shift when I was seven months pregnant. And that wasn't easy, working in an immersion freezer in the freezing cold from 7 at night to 7 in the morning when I was 7 months pregnant because I really needed the money. And then after Graham was born, it was literally impossible to find childcare that would take him at 6.30 in the morning. There was a while there I left him with a neighbor and that I didn't know very well because it was the only option for me. And I really felt... You know, if you don't know the people very well and they're not licensed, you're putting your child at risk. Physical activity for children can also determine their future health. What it did, their involvement in uh, soccer, both of them, it, um, it kept them off the street and out of the malls. They didn't have time for that sort of thing. And so if you ask me, you know, did they turn out, they both turned out to be very decent adults who are capable of... Uh, leading their own lives. One of them is married and has his own family. And uh, that's, that's basically the main thing that you want to give to your children, is that they're able to manage life. <laughs> mm -hmm. He would have loved to have participated in hockey. But hockey, you need a vehicle. Even soccer, you need a vehicle to go around to all the soccer games. Um, it just kind of got embarrassing, begging for rides you know, all the time. So we actually participated in one sport, which was GSL football, uh, because it was always at the same field. It's, it's accessible on the bus, and it was quite cheap. But he would have loved to have played hockey, and he never got an opportunity to do that. The Turners see the advantage of Elizabeth's health plan. Oh, I would say definitely. My, my job uh, provides for extended health benefits, which uh, is something that when you're self-employed, it's, it's not as easy to get. And uh, that definitely has helped our family. Definitely. Without health insurance, Elise and John have few options. 
I had um, a really bad toothache. I experienced that a couple of years ago and I have never felt such pain. And I had to opt for the tooth being pulled rather than the root canal because it was a difference of $200 versus $2,000. My monthly drug bill was around $330. This little baby is $107. Lasts for 30 days. I was paying for those drugs every month out of my pocket. It's one of the reasons why the credit card bills were cranked. Our lives are shaped by the conditions in which we are born, work, and age. While our differences in health status are hardly fair, they are avoidable. Already, the health system is largely unaffordable. It's becoming quite unsustainable. And people who are less healthy, those who live in the lower socioeconomic groups, are significant contributors to health system costs. We know that if we were to address much of their circumstances in terms of housing and nutrition and things like that, it would be a cheaper option than to go on trying to deal with them in the health system itself. I think what's important to emphasize is that we can't do this alone. Those of us working in the health sector play only a small role, and we need to work with other partners in government, those who work in non-governmental organizations, those who work in the community. How do we create, sustain, and maintain health in the citizens who live in our community? Not just how we make them better when they get sick. We need to sit down and really think about the strategies that we need to bring into play, the policy decisions that we need to make in order to ensure that all of our citizens have equal access to opportunity, lifelong achievement, and productivity. I'm not looking for the Ritz. I just, uh, I like somewhere where you got your own bathroom, you got uh, your own bedroom, somewhere to cook, and not that big that you can clean it. I live within my means of the time, and uh, continue to do so. So my means are minimal, so my expectations have to be minimal. The challenges we face with health inequities seem daunting, yet the answers to solve these problems are now clearly within our reach, but it relies on our ability to work together.